Today is episode four of my new regular feature where I share with you my latest purchases from the perfume parlor. I've got a seven bottle clone fragrance haul to go through with you today. And all of these are copies of rare and discontinued fragrances that are now really difficult to get hold of. And they do cost a fortune if you do happen to stumble across any of these for sale from private sellers. So to find out which little gems I've unearthed in this little haul, stay tuned to Mags Frags. Yes, hello again, everybody, and thank you very much once again for tuning in to this special Perfume Parlor episode of Mags Frags. I'm Paul, and this is the fourth episode of my new weekly series that focuses on my uh, latest purchases from the Perfume Parlor. So as I mentioned in the intro, uh, this episode focuses on rare and discontinued fragrances that are now very difficult to find. So if you've ever owned a scent that you've really enjoyed uh, and, it's, and it's gone discontinued and it's now impossible to get hold of, then these perfume parlor copies may just uh, rescue the day. Um, I've got a few rare scents myself, uh, which I've, I've now almost become like expensive ornaments yeah, because I'm simply scared to run the bottle down and, and run out of juice. Use, which is I think it's a little bit sad really uh, but this is the dilemma we face when our, our favorite fragrances get discontinued so if you're not bothered about the original bottle and you just want to experience the aromas of some rare gems hopefully one of these two in this list may just scratch your itch yeah, but before I begin the rundown, if you are interested in picking up any of these bottles to try out for yourself, uh, you can uh, place an order by, and use my 10% discount code, which I'll leave a link to down in the description. The link will direct you to a login page and you'll be asked to create a login name uh, and also a password. Uh, but once you've logged into your account and you've made your purchases, your discount will automatically be applied at the checkout. And as always, guys, I've just got to say, with all these videos, a bit of a boring disclaimer now, um, but I don't work for the Perfume Parlor, and this video is in no way sponsored by them. And all of these opinions on these fragrances that I'm going to talk about today are my own opinions, and also all of them were bought with my own money. I do, however, receive a small commission for recommending you to their site, uh, so by clicking the link, uh, you'll save your 10% while supporting the channel and helping me to bring you more free content in the future. Yeah, so kicking off this list is one called French Flowers for Men, and the perfume parlor code on this one is 0581. This is a copy of Fleur de Mal by Jean-Paul Gaultier, which is now virtually impossible to get hold of unless you're willing to pay well upwards of £185 on like eBay or, or somewhere like that. And you'll, you'll only probably find one or two people selling used bottles of this one. The top notes in this are Pettigrain and Orange Blossom. In the mid, we've got Neroli and Lavender. And the base notes are Chamomile, and basil yes yeah, so i'll start off by saying uh, don't expect anything remotely like lamal or the other lamal flankers with this one it opens up with a massive explosion of pettigrain and orange blossom and it comes off smelling extremely green like a like i'd say a handful of crushed leaves it also has a slight herbal quality too if you uh, smell it up close but in the air you're going to get more of the orange blossom and if you don't know what orange blossom smells like uh, don't think it's going to smell like oranges because it doesn't it's a really de uh, divisive note and some people uh, to some people it comes off smelling extremely clean and soapy and uh, to others it comes off smelling a little bit animalic and a, a little bit funky with even some people picking up, picking up on like a urine aroma but I'm glad to say that I only get the very clean soapy accord and as it dries down uh, it transforms into a white floral dominant fragrance that may be a little bit challenging for some guys if you're into your more masculine scents. The chamomile in the base blends with the lavender and the neroli uh, to produce a really powdery soapiness which reminds me of like fresh bed linen after it's dried outdoors during the springtime. The performance is decent but not mind blowing, especially when it's in the middle of winter right now and I've been wearing and all I've been wearing is like 14 hour winter bangers so maybe I might just break this one out again in the springtime just to see how it performs then. 
This would make a lovely office fragrance though, and it does have a really nice fresh out of the shower, crisp and fresh feeling about it. Okay, next up, we've got one called Florence Spite for men. And the perfume parlor card on this one is 0588. This one is a copy of Gucci Envy, which is a fragrance that appears on nearly every reviewer's list of uh, favorite discontinued fragrances. It's an amber woody fragrance that was launched back in 1998 and the top notes in this are mandarin orange, coriander, pepper, ginger, lavender, mahogany and cardamom. In the mid we've got cedar, sandalwood, carnation, rose and jasmine. And in the base there's vanilla, musk, patchouli, amber, leather, tobacco, incense and vetiver. Yep, loads of notes. This is a very spicy, semi-sweet fragrance with rich woods, uh, but it's the spices which stand out the most for me in this one. You get lots of the ginger and pepper up top, uh, but as it starts to dry down, you get this sweeter and more dense notes coming through uh, with a touch of leather, um, the amber, and a little bit of tobacco. The vanilla provides some creamy sweetness and what you get for the most part is a classic masculine uh, 90s retro old school fragrance that's fairly loud and in your face but also uh, very crisp and clean. The pepperiness stays around right the way through into the dry down and I think it's a, a really nice fragrance to wear in the cold weather around about Christmas time. It was very unique when it first came out, but since then, uh, fragrances like Burberry London, um, Armani Stronger With You Intensely, and Victor and Rolf's Spice Bomb are probably better alternatives to this. But this has that romantic nostalgia that's sure to transport you back to where you were in the 1990s if you ever owned a bottle of this, and I'm sure lots of uh, you out there did. Yeah, this next one is called Saintly Smell. And the perfume bar code on that one is 1261. Yeah, this is a copy of Ultra Zest from the Amen line of fragrances from Thierry Mugler, which used to retail for around about the £40 mark and was regarded as a little bit of a letdown in the line. Then it goes discontinued and people start charging five times the price for it on eBay and suddenly everyone just raves about it saying that it's kind of the best thing since sliced bread. Um, the top notes in this one are mint, ginger, uh, tangerine and blood orange. In the mid, we've got coffee, cinnamon, and black pepper. And the base notes in this one are vanilla, patchouli, and tonka bean. Yet I'll start by saying that if you want to smell the scent DNA of Ultra Zest, then this is it. Some people say that Ultra Red by uh, Paco Rabanne smells similar and is a good alternative to Ultra Zest, but that couldn't be further from the truth in my opinion. Uh, maybe it's just because it contains blood orange and it, it contains the word uh, ultra in the name uh, but for me uh, that's as far as the comparison goes and I don't think they smell anything alike. The ultra red is miles more sweet and fruity and it's an out and out mass appealing sports fragrance. The Ultra Zest is a much more challenging uh, fragrance and in the opening you do get some of the blood orange and tangerine but this is also accompanied by the Amen DNA of dark resinous patchouli, coffee, leather and plenty of spices. This is more like a, a burnt bitter orange with a masculine smoky and woody dry down. I think when people see the bright orange vibrant bottle of the original Ultra Zest, um, they kind of think it's going to be a bright citrus fragrance for, uh, for the summertime, but in reality it's actually anything but. Uh, this is a masculine firecracker that's better suited to the autumn and winter. This will not be liked by everyone, uh, but for anyone looking for something very unique and interesting that's going to challenge your senses, then I would say this is a really great one to pick up. Uh, and this perfume parlor copy is very accurate to the original. Um, I don't own the original, uh, but I have had my nose on it and this is very accurate to it. Okay, so the fourth one on the list is called Water Spirit 2. And the perfume parlor code on this one is 0008. This one is a copy of Aqua di Gio Ascenza by Giorgio Armani. And if you want to check out a full review that I did of the original, you can check that one out in the 365 project. The top notes in this one are bergamot, grapefruit, and calone. In the mid, we've got jasmine, 
basil and pepper and in the base there's patchouli, clary sage, vetiver, ambergris and musk. The opening in this is a very bright and citrusy blast of grapefruit and bergamot and this is accompanied by a salty marine vibe that's provided by the Calone. Uh, Calone is a, a synthetic aroma chemical that produces a, like a watery and metallic accord and some people describe it as smelling a bit like watermelon. For the first few minutes it's fairly loud and it's very similar to the original Paw Home version but when it dries down it develops into more of a rounded and green scent character that I feel is a touch more mature and grown up than the original. There's also some herbal notes and some spices in here uh, but it's the vetiver, the clary sage and the ambergris in the base that gives this one uh, a more earthy scent profile and in my personal opinion it's a more interesting and better take on the original Pawhom version even though it does smell quite similar. It's extremely versatile and you could wear it all year round. It's a, a gentleman's classic and, and it's got a really lovely clean and crisp scent profile. A Senza is uh, ridiculously difficult to find nowadays and if you do uh, manage to find somebody selling it, it's going to set you back a pretty penny. This perfume parlour version is very accurate and it has beast mode performance considering it's a fresh scent and it stays on skin for a good 8-10 to 10 hours so definitely uh, one that I'd recommend that you try for yourselves. Ok next up we've got one called Florence for men. And the perfume parlor code on this one is 0591. This one is a copy of the 2003 version of Gucci Po Homme, which is now as rare as hen's teeth and you just can't find this one anywhere. Uh, the top notes in this, bear with me because there's loads of them. Uh, the top notes are Artemisia, Basil, Bergamot, Lavender, Lemon, Pettigrain, Ginger and Papyrus Wood. In the mid there's Geranium, Cedar, Jasmine, patchouli, pink pepper, orris root, pimento and sandalwood and in the base there's leather, labdanum, oak moss, amber, incense, musk, tonka bean, vanilla, vetiver and sage. Yes back in the day fragrances seem to always contain a huge amount of fragrance notes and this one definitely followed suit uh, with that little lot. So what do I get from this one? It basically starts as it means to go on and it bypasses uh, any kind of fresh citruses even though they are listed as top notes. To my nose I get a, like a dry woody pencil shavings type aroma very early on uh, way before it even starts to dry down. I then get a slight smoky resinous quality coming from uh, the, like the, the patchouli, the incense uh, and a little bit of like a leather note coming from the labdanum. And it seems to stay like this for the most part until the very far dry down where it does sweeten up a little bit by, uh, by the tonka bean, the vanilla uh, and a bit of the amber, it's, they start to make a faint appearance. But this one to me is fairly herbal smelling and it, it's got a very potent projection off the skin. I'm not personally the biggest fan of this type of scent DNA and I uh, prefer your more sweeter fragrances. But if you do like uh, your scents that are more on the resinous, uh, woody and smoky side then this is a really solid one to try. It performs really well and it lasts for ages. Alternatively you can check out uh, Bentley Absolute which you can pick up for a really decent price at discounters and it's literally identical to this one. Next up is one called American Melody and the perfume parlor code on that one is 0610. This one is a clone of the vintage black and white plastic bottle of Jazz by Yves Saint Laurent and as soon as I sprayed it it was like going back 35 years in a blink of an eye. The top notes in this one are nutmeg, artemisia, coriander, cinnamon, lavender, basil, uh, star anise, bergamot and cardamom. In the mid there's carnation, iris, jasmine and geranium and in the base there's sandalwood, leather, tonka bean, amber, musk, oak moss, cedar and tobacco. Yeah, jazz is an aromatic fragrance that's uh, fresh, a little bit spicy in the opening with a well-blended floral dry down that also reveals some green and woody notes. 
As it dries down, you get a lovely creamy sandalwood that comes through with some other sweeter notes, and you get a gorgeous conflict between the sweetness and the fresh classic fougere chords. It reminds me quite a lot of Chanel Platinum Ego East, uh, but this is uh, less in your face and it just doesn't singe your hairs in your nostril like the Platinum Ego East does. This reminds me of stealing a few sprays from my sister's ex-boyfriend's bottle uh, and heading out to a teen disco back in the late 1980s. It's a, a retro masterpiece and it sits alongside monsters like Kouros, uh, Chanel Anteus, D uh, Dior June and a little bit later Polo Green in my fragrance hall of fame. They conjure up so many memories when you revisit them in the same way that kind of like listening to an old album does. This perfume parlor copy uh, definitely has that uh, jazz DNA, but I can't tell you exactly how close it is though because I doubt my sister's old boyfriend uh, still has his bottle for me to test it side by side. Okay, and the final one for today is called Strong Water for Men, and the perfume parlor code on this one is 1410. This one is a copy of the most hyped discontinued fragrance in recent years and that is Invictus Aqua 2016. The top notes in this one are pink pepper, grapefruit, yuzu. In the mid we've got violet leaf and seawater. And in the base we've got amber wood, ambergris and guayac wood. Yeah, this one is a prime example of how the fragrance community can take a discontinued fragrance that's good but not great and turn it into a long lost gift from the gods. Don't get me wrong, it's a very nice, fresh, tart, citrusy fragrance with some aquatic notes. Um, but I might be just the, I might just be the odd man out uh, in all the world because I actually always preferred the original Invictus over the Aqua uh, when they was both readily available to buy. However, this one is a lovely, fresh and uplifting scent uh, that hardly anyone I think would dislike. It's an ultra casual fragrance for mainly the warmer months of the year, but definitely versatile to wear pretty much all year round. It dries down to a sweet, uh, lightly floral scent uh, when the violet leaf and the woods come through. There's also some ambroxan and ambergris in it, so you get a slightly salty aquatic vibe lurking in the background, uh, but it's not too dominant or anything like uh, you'd find in like this one, like the Bulgari Pohom. If you want aquatic, then this is the king of them all. So you can still pick up a Rissassia Was, which smells like Invictus Aqua 2016, but just a little bit more sweet, I would say. Um, and before you see it, yes, a Was did come out before Invictus Aqua, so it's not technically a clone. Um, but since a Was got promoted so much uh, in the community, it has now nearly tripled in price to what it used to sell at. Uh, I remember being able to pick it up for £25, but now it's gone up to uh, round about the £60 mark. And I'm maybe not so enthusiastic about that one anymore. This perfume parlor clone is decent and it has really good performance. I haven't tested it against the original Invictus Aqua 2016 because I, I don't own that particular fragrance anymore, uh, but it definitely smells like how I remember the, uh, the Aqua to smell. And it's close enough for me uh, and I'm really looking forward to breaking this one out in the uh, spring and summer months again. Yeah, so in summary, I think all of these fragrances that are featured in today's video are really great and really interesting in their own unique way. The Invictus Aqua copy is probably the most mass appealing, whilst the Ultra Zest copy is probably the one that's going to challenge you most, but very interesting and I quite like this one. Um, but all the rest of them, they're just classic men's colognes that are going to take you back down memory lane if you've ever owned any of these in the past. There's none here that I'd say that I disliked, so I'd say fill your boots and try them all out for yourself and have a lot of fun doing so. Yeah, so that's about it for this episode, but I'll be back very soon with another perfume parlor haul, and I've already had... Um, them all delivered and I've got to say that I'm really really impressed with a couple of these so far so don't miss the uh, the next installment of my uh, perfume parlor haul videos. I've also got some great ones coming up in the uh, 365 project so it's all exciting stuff uh, coming up in the near future. So as always guys thank you very much for, uh, for tuning in once again. Stay safe, keep smelling fresh and I'll see you very soon for another one. Bye bye for now.